again, look at the distribution. Look how tight is everything. Guys, when you have a distribution this tight, sellers are comfortable, right? The longer a market goes sideways near all time highs, it's telling you there is no selling pressure. Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the AccessToTrader.com Weekend Update Show. Hope everybody is doing well. Hope everybody had uh, a great weekend. Remember guys and gals and everybody else in between, eight days away from Father's Day, right? I know we're the afterthoughts. I know we're the crap-ons. But guys, we, you know, as dads, and I think I can speak for all the dads out there, eight days away, don't neglect us, right? We're, you know, we're kind of important also. So for all you guys who are out there who are great dads, eight days away from the big day. And by the way, we're all going to get forgotten in a pair of socks in all of our futures. And maybe, just maybe, we'll get a big piece of the chicken. Thanks, Chris Rock. Uh, other than that, guys, let's talk about the markets. Uh, look. The queues have been consolidating incredibly well from last week. The, the biggest discussion for the last week or so has been the meme stops, the, the really crazy random names that had big short interest that have been dead for 99% of their tenure. They woke up this week. They woke up last week, and that was kind of like, um, you know, that, that was kind of like the drug of choice. You know, people chasing, people buying, people holding all over the place. Uh, but the big thing for me, and I, and I think a lot of you guys who watch this channel as well, it's been kind of like what the market in terms of the NASDAQ 100, in terms of uh, the big mega cap technology names, what they didn't do for a long period of time. So we got the part when they went down, right? We were sell bias for three weeks, and then they finally confirmed the 50-day moving average. When I say we, we mean the Qs. And the market kind of started building off the 50-day moving average. And the one thing that we did notice after the consolidation, none of these big technology names were participating. They just were kind of dead money. And we were just sitting there and just like for about a week or so and say, well, what's going to happen? You know, like, like literally what is going to take these stocks to finally you know, wake up? And usually what happens is it's the indexes that confirm first. Right. And then they start pulling everything up. And if you remember last week, the only one that was really doing a great job. And again, this stock has been an absolute monster. Uh, has been NVIDIA, right? This was the stock, first stock that reclaimed the 50-day moving average. And since then, since that that um, uh, that PR of, of them having a fourth one stock split, it's been on an absolute monster tear. And their stock split, split I believe, is on uh, June the 21st, so about nine days from now. So this has been really carrying the market. Because if you look at other names in the same group, like in Intel, right? It's still done absolutely nothing going sideways for the last two weeks while NVIDIA has been going absolute nuts. A uh, stock, for example, like Maxim, right, has been kind of basing out for the last month as NVIDIA has been going nuts. So you've had one stock really taking control of the action. And the question was, well, when are these stocks, what is the traditional beta names finally going to wake up your Amazons of the world, the Zooms of the world, the, um, the Teslas of the world, the Apples of the world. And slowly but surely, what we saw this week versus what we saw the previous two weeks, as the market started building above supply and started putting in a new floor, we finally got a pulse. We finally got these stocks to start waking up or either getting really close to now into confirmation and at least going into next week we're pretty damn bullish on the whole group. And eventually you have to assume, and again, I'm not, I'm not saying one thing or another about these random stocks to go from like two to 75 in like 30 minutes. I have nothing against them. If you're trading these things, God bless. But in my world, it's kind of important that these stocks uh, kind of wake up. And this is the first time we saw things moving. And we saw Amazon finally break out off the 50 day moving average, had a Big, big move on Thursday. What a beautiful move. It was up $60 on Thursday, down a couple of bucks on Friday, which is basically a great rest area. And if you guys remember from Thursday night's video, I said, look, we're either, it's either gonna, it's either going to be a, a buy back on strength or a buy into the rising 60-minute support. And this is what I mean about 
uh, the rising 60-minute support, right? And the, you know, great job for all you guys caught the bounce on this thing. If you look, this is the whole thing here is the rise of 60-minute support. So when it came back down, a little bit of profit-taking uh, into this rise in support, again, eager shorts got trapped, and they slowly walked them back up. So Amazon looks incredibly good uh, going into this week. Zoom, right? Zoom was going sideways for months and months and months. They came out with earnings. There was a whole big debate. They talked about, well, you know, is the growth gone? Is the growth story out of it? Is it going to be just an afterthought like anything else? And is it going to eventually just kind of fade away into obscurity, the, you know, regardless of how many people, including myself, who use the product? And I think it's great. And Zoom did a great job this week. Not only did it re hold the rising, 60, or the rising daily, it finally reclaimed this whole supply zone and reclaimed the 50-day moving average the first time, literally, uh, since January 1st, since March the 1st. So really, really bullish sign there. Docu had great earnings this week, right? Amazing earnings, had a big, big run. First close, again, over supply zone as well. Uh, you have a name, for example, like ZS that we've been you know, talking into nausea for about three weeks. Finally broke out, right? Finally broke out over that $200 level. Nice close there above that 207 level. Looks like a kind of a magnet to 211, 218. Now, is every one of these stocks completely out of the woods? No, not yet. But slowly but surely, we're starting to get setups. And again, they might not trigger this week, right? They might not confirm, but at least they're on, you know, at least they're on deck, right? Even though Apple is still on underneath all this major supply here, at least you see if there's a continuation of strength and technology this week, all it has to do is get above this supply zone here and it's going to start its next move up. Uh, Square, right, had a really, really great start of the year, had a really great end to 2020. Again, is it imminent? I don't think it's imminent, but you, at least you can see here, right? The top of the channel is right in sights. And if it could start confirming the top of the channel, it could be good as well. Peloton, right? A name that really benefited from the whole stay-at-home movement, including myself. I've used it five times in five years. That's right. Um, great product. Hurts my tush. Great product, right? So you can see it very, very close as well. You know, you can see the whole top of the channel here getting very, very close. And again, just like Apple and just like Square and a lot of other names that have been really dragged down for months and months and months and had absolutely no signs of life. Maybe this thing is a day away, two day, three days away, finally start reclaiming uh, all the supply and moving higher. And names like Neo that had a big run are now continuing its bigger run, right? It finally first closed over the 50-day moving average. Uh, again, we saw a lot of call buying uh, coming into Neo uh, towards the latter part of the week. We saw the 45s, the 50s, I even saw the 55s, uh, all short-term uh, expiration. So very, very bullish sign there. The name that everybody wants to finally wake up one way or another is obviously Tesla. And obviously, you know, if you've been watching this broadcast, it's kind of my favorite stock. I don't care which way it trades, long, short, but what I do need, right, uh, and more than anything else, is for this thing to pick a damn direction. Now, if you look at the options market for the last two weeks or so, you're really not going to get a good sign of which way the money, the institutional money flow is betting. We saw some 650 calls. We saw some 700 near-term calls. But we also saw some 550, some 525, some 575 puts on both sides, right? On both sides of, the, uh, of bullish and the bearish case. But right now, it's sitting on this really, really tight flag. So if you kind of draw this imaginary trend line, it really needs to put in some work. Again, nowhere close to be out of the woods macro to the upside, but at least if you draw a trend line here, you can see this top of the channel here would be a really good catalyst on the way up. Now, again, there's a flip side for that. Just because it's been trading so tight and you can turn around and say, well, it's been kind of making lower highs now since all the way back to January, February, March, April 14th. You're not wrong either, right? But the point is, a lot of times when you're thinking, you're assuming a stock is going to go in that one direction, it kind of reverses course. So you can't be overzealous and over, overly opinionated and say, well, it's definitely going lower. Well, based on what, right? It hasn't gone lower yet. It hasn't gone higher yet. So we need to wait for confirmation of this thing. But I will say, at least we have the top of the channel here ready to go, right? We have the bottom channel here, really, really tight channel here for the last four or five days ready to go. Something's going to give on this damn thing. That, that's for sure. Something's going to give on Tesla. 
uh, going into this week. And, you know, again, it's very, very easy to say, well, it's either going to go higher or lower. Yeah, yeah, you don't get this hard-hitting technical analysis from nowhere else. Of course, it's either going to go higher or lower. But we do have a definitive level here on the bottom. We do have a definitive level here on the top. And eventually, with patience and calmness, with no bias, we're going to let this thing confirm one way or another and have a pretty good potential measured move. So we're set up, right? We're definitely set up. Uh, even names like Plantier, right? Even a name like, like this, which again, it's not a really a big favorite of mine or point of interest. You can see how tight it's getting towards the top of the channel, right? You can just see it. So you have a lot of names like that. Intel, same thing with the semiconductor space. Look how long this distribution is. This is a distribution that's going back all the way in the beginning of the year. Something has to give with these stocks. So the more important part is we know the market continues to build. Qs are acting very, very well. A stone throws away from all-time highs. Uh, you look at the Russell, right? Russell has been acting incredibly well, uh, going all the way back to um, 2020. Um, you have the spies. Took a little bit of a breather this week. But look, again, look at the distribution. Look how tight is everything. Guys, when you have a distribution this tight, sellers are comfortable, right? The longer a market goes sideways near all-time highs, it's telling you there is no selling pressure. There is no, I need to be out of my positions. I need to liquidate. There's fear. There's this, there's that. There's none of that, right? And that's where the bias, at least my opinion, and my bias is going into this week. We're going sideways in a lot of major indexes. Uh, the technology group that's represented by the NASDAQ 100 is starting to pull up a lot of names that we trade. Uh, if everything goes well this week, uh, Amazon just had a res day. If everything goes well this week and the market continues its strength, you know, Amazon could see 3440, uh, 3460 in this channel. Uh, NVIDIA look at, has more upside, right? It was a really good pivot on Friday. We'll get to the pivots in a second. Uh, it looks like before the split, if the market continues to be good, why can't it get to uh, 730, 740? We saw a monster nonstop uh, June the 25th expiration, excuse me, June 18 and June 25th uh, expiration of the 750 calls. Why not, right? The market uh, is incredibly, uh, incredibly strong. Look at a stock like Lululemon, right? Ready to bust out. Looks great. Look at Docu, right? Big, big run. First close over supply. Looks great. Zoom, huge call buying going on, right? First close over the 50-day moving average. They were coming for the next two weeks of expiration, the 395 calls. They forgot about the 370s, the 375s. They're going straight to 395 calls. And you can see where your measure potential is on your first move all the way up to uh, 386 level. And, and look at a stock like Team. I didn't hear, first of all, full disclosure, I had no idea the stock was even in the NASDAQ 100, let alone I think I ever traded. But look at this channel here, guys. Look how deep and long this channel is. Remember, the longer the distribution, the bigger the move potentially could be. So we are set up this, uh, we are definitely, definitely set up uh, for this week. Even the damn meme stocks, they don't even go down, right? Even, even AMC that looked like it was about to fall off a planet, Reverse course, even GameStop that had, um, you know, that had earnings that weren't great. They did some sort of at the money uh, offering, blah, 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 blah. They couldn't even kill this thing. You know, you know, what's the big deal? Going down 25 points after the stock went from 50 to 350, right? Not really a big deal. So the market is very strong. The internal strength and breadth are very, very strong. So unless something materialistically happens uh, over the weekend or in the beginning of the week, you have to be bullish until technical reasons tell you uh, not to be. So very, very important there. So let's talk about uh, Friday's action. And this is where finally the bulls, the technology bulls woke up and uh, turned out to be pretty good. One disappointing trade there. I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Um, obviously, Dell, I, I've literally said Dell 105 for the last three weeks. Okay, maybe Monday, maybe Sunday. Sunday is always a good trading day. Um, Amazon, right? Amazon 3300 broke out. Uh, rested yesterday, needed to reclaim that 3361, but more important, all dips into rising 60-minute supports are valid, and this was the dip in the rising 60-minute support uh, for the day. Hit it right here perfectly and bounced about $12 uh, off the low. Again, I still like it for um, for uh, for this week, obviously. NVIDIA is great. I, I'm starting to really, really love NVIDIA. It's by far my second favorite stock. Tesla's my favorite to trade. Uh, caught in the, in the video pretty well. Uh, 705 will be a big area rejected there several times. Here is NVIDIA. It took out the whole range of 705 
and went as high as to uh, 714 and change. Beautiful move there on NVIDIA. Tesla, I'm still waiting for. Roku, not a big move at all. 351 needs to build. This one didn't put out a big move. Uh, only went up about two bucks and then kind of reverse course. A lot of names reverse course, but um, a little disappointing in Roku, but all in all, uh, the stock is still above its range, building above the 50-day moving average. Um, let me see what else, what else, what else. Zoom was a monster, absolute monster. Uh, 351 needs to build on Zoom. Here was Zoom. Took out the 351, uh, put up you know an, a $17 channel. Huge move run, absolutely huge move. I still like it. Uh, for this week. Can it, can it rest on Monday? Very possibly. Uh, CGEN, again, smaller name, didn't follow through. 850, big, big level, rejected there three times, didn't follow through at all. Again, these you know smaller names are completely different than beta. Uh, it took out 50, only went up 12 cents, and then completely died on a vine. Uh, so CGEN did absolutely nothing. Uh, Adobe, big move. Talk, we talked about Adobe on the thir Thursday night's video. Again, same thing. Uh, as Amazon, either a rising dip buy or above 537. Here was Adobe, still looks higher, really good looking chart. So it took out the 537, uh, went to 542, still looks higher, especially if the market uh, continued higher. Uh, SGen never got up to the 159, uh, 160 level. Uh, Google, you know, it broke out, it went up about nine, 10 bucks, and then it came all the way back in. So uh, Google took out this uh, 3431 area, went up about 10 and came back into its breakout price. That's the bad news. The good news is this is the highest close in its whole formation. So hopefully this thing kind of starts reclaiming Friday session and moves higher on Google. Uh, PTIX never got to 420, traded to 419. Uh, beautiful, just a beautiful move in NVIDIA. Zoom take on the way up, Roku take on the way up. This is the one that really pissed me off. So this MNMD, I talked about this on Monday or Tuesday. We, we've been seeing this thing, $5 call buyers, short-term expiration, the June 18 and 25 expiration for two weeks. I'm talking nonstop, one after another, after another. So I got long this thing. Uh, I added a little bit more. Um, I was in a little bit less than half size, like nonstop. You would have thought this thing would have exploded. It spent 99% of the day underneath supply for the day. You know, I sold it, lost about 16 cents on it uh, and not the end of the world. I just, it just, it was not acting well. The good news is, the good news is, this is the highest close in this whole formation. So if it could reclaim Friday's highs, you know, 404, 405, I know some of you guys are still long this thing. Who knows? Maybe you get a PR over the weekend, something. But you know, there were definitely huge sellers there. Just, just they would not let it go. And the moral of the story is, again, no matter how good a chart looks, no matter how great the sentiment looks, no matter how many call buyers are in, if there's a reload seller in the crowd, they're just liquidating, liquidating for whatever reason, they're going to win that session, not you. But again, hope springs eternal. For, you, for all you guys who are still long, again, the good news is this is the highest close in this whole formation. And maybe, who knows, maybe you get lucky uh, with some sort of news uh, coming uh, over the weekend. So that's that there. Uh, so Zoom monsters, Zoom monsters, NVIDIA absolute monsters continues to stay strong. And that is it. So that's it, guys. Wishing everybody an amazing, amazing uh, weekend. I think this video should go out probably around Saturday evening. Uh, at worst case, Sunday morning. But anyway, folks, uh, continue the grind, continue the journey, uh, believe in yourself. Don't ever let anybody put their negative energy that they can't do something on you, right? They're projecting on you. You can do it, okay? Everybody starts out the same way. Everybody has the same playing field. The charts are your friend. Technical analysis is your guide. And your opinion is the only opinion that counts. Guys, God bless. Have a great weekend. And I'll see you all on Monday.